I want to talk about uh, surge control devices and uh, how we utilize these in the Surge 2000 models. Uh, this is a list of the devices that we've uh, incorporated at this point and uh, we'll discuss each of these. Surge tanks, air valves, relief valves, and uh, various types of these devices. Uh, surge tank, uh, we'll start with a closed surge tank. A uh, closed surge tank has a uh, uh, space with a gas in it and uh, of course as all surge control devices we have to have exactly two connections uh, to do our surge model. So we have uh, uh, as shown here. And this is the data that's required. Uh, there's a, a diameter or an effective diameter of the tank. If it's not a vertical tank you should take the total volume and uh, the total uh, draft up and down vertical draft and convert it to an equivalent diameter. Uh, this is how high the fluid is initially. This is the volume of gas. The gas constant will vary between 1 and 1.4. Uh, if you're not sure what it is, it's 1 for isothermal, 1.4 for adiabatic, uh, 1.2 is a good uh, number to uh, at least start with. Uh, the resistance inflow and outflow, of course resistance is defined by as the head drop over the flow squared. These would have to be calculated based on the characteristics of the uh, connection between the surge tank and the uh, pipe and this is the elevation of the node. So this is the data that we'll see uh, when we uh, uh, set up a closed surge tank. Now an open surge tank uh, has much less data. It just has the diameter of the tank and uh, uh, there's a maximum level in there. Now the maximum level uh, converts or, or uh, designates this device as a spilling surge tank and the level cannot go above that value. If it reaches 50 feet the liquid will spill out. Again, the resistances are based on the connections. So uh, uh, this is both an open surge tank and if we put in a non-value here for the maximum level it will become a spilling surge tank. Uh, a non-spilling surge tank, of course, the maximum level is just zero. So now the water can go up as high as it wants or the liquid uh, into the tank. Uh, a one-way surge tank uh, basically is a device which will uh, uh, has a check valve which allows flow only to go into the system and uh, this is an open tank that's uh, under normal steady state conditions the head here would be too high and the flow would be spilling out the tank so what it's designed to do is as the pressure drops uh, to the point where the uh, head in the line is below the tank level it will open up and prevent cavitation. So in order to designate this device we have to put in check valve data. That's the basic uh, information that we have to put in. If we designate that there's a check valve resistance in time then uh, it uh, the program will interpret this as being a one-way open surge tank or a feed tank as it's sometimes called. A bladder surge tank has a bladder in that will keep the uh, tank from activating until your pressure exceeds the set pressure or the set head that's uh, given here. So uh, the bladder will activate above this head. Uh, so and we can use either pressure or head. If we just click on using pressure this will change to the set pressure. Uh, we have air vacuum valves. A single stage air vacuum valve has the same inflow diameter as outflow diameter and we put in the diameters here uh, the initial volume is zero this is used basically the initial volume uh, to be able to uh, model a startup condition where there's air trapped at the at the uh, air vacuum valve and this would be the amount of air uh, a two-stage air vacuum valve will have a different size inflow and outflow orifice to allow the uh, uh, air to escape uh, more slowly to prevent uh, what we call a surge slam uh, due to the uh, uh, water columns coming together too rapidly. So that would be a two-stage air valve. Now there's also three-stage air valves which basically have usually the main inflow and outflow orifices of the same size. It has a second orifice 
which will be activated on either pressure, flow, or volume. This shows pressure, uh, and this will be the uh, activating value. This will activate on 1.5 uh, psi, the pressure that will uh, activate the uh, air vacuum valve. Uh, we have relief valves. The ordinary pressure relief valve uh, will open up when the pressure reaches a certain value. Uh, this is the time it takes to open, the opening time. Uh, it will start to close when the pressure drops down to a second value, it's 150 here PSI, and a closing time. Now we can uh, sense the pressures at a different node. The default node will be at the location of the pressure relief valve. But if we put in a different location, uh, we can do that. And here we can use head instead of pressure if we wish to. Uh, here's an example where we're sensing it at a different node. We're sensing at this node instead of this node. Uh, that's not a real usual application, but it's certainly available as uh, an option. A rupture disc is a device where the uh, disc will rupture when it reaches the opening pressure or head. And uh, that's a simple device which is effective for controlling high pressure surges. Uh, the surge anticipation valve, which is generally put at the uh, discharge side of a pump, uh, will open on a down surge. Uh, here, this is going to open at 40 psi. Uh, down surge and in anticipation that there's going to be, uh, or the pump has tripped, and there'll be an upsurge coming. So here, this will operate on a cycle, so that it will take so much time to open. It will stay open for a certain amount of time, and it will take so much time to close. And that's the data that's uh, required for this application.